Yeah, that's pretty easy. It's, 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 it sounds like cheesy, but it's the love for music. Um, we just love music. And, uh, you know, we've been very busy with other things like during, during uh, the COVID period, uh, working on music for clients, uh, the video productions and everything. But as soon as like uh, we're on tour or we have a new track laid up ready to release and we hear it again and we can play it in the clubs, you know, it's just instantly like, this is what we want to do. This is where the energy is. And as soon as the crowd is like um, enjoying our tracks and they understand what we like about music and they sing along, um, that's just, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's the holy grail, I think. That's what everyone wants. Like we slowed down like the really hard club bangers a little bit. And now like also the sound is changing in the clubs a little bit. And we, we always do like 20% of the new sound and then 80% of the sick individual sound. So we kind of adapt a little bit. And uh, that's what we feel as well. Like now we're starting back, like we're starting touring again and we feel like what works and what not in clubs. And we see a lot of colleagues play. Um, so definitely like over the next couple of months, you will see us releasing a lot of club bangers again because we need some weapons for our sets. So that's good. We always start very musically. Uh, even if we make like a very big club track, most of the times we start with a, like a synth progression that we have. A lot of the sick individuals tracks have like these uplifting synth progressions and uh, that's where we get all the energy from. And we actually have two studios next to each other. So we, we work separately. And then um, it's always the, the thing that we, I, I like try to create something and I like to make something beautiful and give it to Jim and then Jim has to like say like well I like it or not so I really like to it's like a challenge to make that level up go up go up so I make a chord progression and certain sounds and then I play the demo but I make sure it doesn't sound like a demo I just want to make sure it's like if, if it's like uh, you play your song for an A&R manager or something uh, you want to make sure someone is impressed so that's that's our strategy always so uh, we I played the song a little bit Jim is like well I like this I like that and then I just hand over the project and he starts working on a drop and then uh, he he does something and then we play it again and then we work on a track together in the mixing and mastering so that's kind of the process that we work on when we're creating songs yeah, well, actually, uh, Jim and I, we both met each other around music school. So we both studied um, uh, music um, on the School of Arts. Um, and actually, on the first day, um, it was kind of like, it was a very artistic kind of school. So everyone was doing weird bleepy kind of stuff that wasn't like at all in, in the dance genre. But, uh, but, but Jim, but Jim was, was doing something that was actually a classical project. But I just heard like, okay, this guy is probably making commercial, more mainstream kind of stuff that I like as well. So at the end of the first day, I said like, okay, dude, uh, you really rock what you did. It's very good. And he felt the same thing. So we were like high five and start working on, on the second day. Um, but that classical training and all the, yeah, all the theory and everything, that's all, that's all in our, in our brain, that's all what we got taught. Like, and um, we still carry that in our music as well. I just love to be creative in that aspect and not always go for the the one six four five chord progression, but just keep it uh, keep it interesting and uh, also use like nice sounding instruments. We do a lot, like an advice for new producers. You have to build a, a brand, and also it should look good. Like we're always taking care also of, of the visual aspect of things like if we make a song we see already colors we have already colors in mind or, or little, little little images that can go with the track so we always like to produce a music video we just released a new song actually this friday and we we made an awesome like visually stunning music video with it so uh, and that gives also that brings the music alive like it makes it more alive also during our live shows we have a uh this is sick show we call it but it's like a whole visual show uh, syncing with music and that gives so much more impact to the to the people to the whole experience we thought that it was cool to also work on our own like merch and also our all our own fashion kind of items um, so we started new made fashion uh, which is also the name of our label new made um, 
and uh, we just wanted to create our own stuff. So it's all in-house and we, uh, I actually created with one of our designers. So we just sit together and work on cool stuff that we think like, okay, this, this is something that we would like to wear when we're on stage. And um, so we, yeah, we have some t-shirts where it's like kind of rock influence where you have all the names of, of all the tracks that we made on one shirt, those kind of, th those kind of t-shirts. Um, but also just want to keep it a little bit fashionable. Um, and the cool thing is, as soon as you do it yourself, we could just rock it out in a couple of days, have it. And then if we like it and we wear it and we get good reactions, we can bring it into production. I think one of the biggest differences from, from other producers is, is that we're a duo and we both produce. And a lot of uh, DJ duos, they have one producer and one is very skilled in DJing. Most of the time, that's, that's what, what's going on. Or he's like, the other guy is very good in promoting or doing the social media part. But we both are trained musicians. So um, we just like to like have a project, like I was saying, and, and send it to the other and just keep working on it together. And I think that's a magical thing because we never have this like, oh, we're not inspired. I don't know what, what I have to create. That kind of moment because, because we both like to create music. Um, and as soon as Jim brings in a project, I'm like, okay, this is great. I'm gonna work on this, this and this and just hand over the project and uh, I'll, I'll play you this tomorrow. So that just keeps our energy going as well. So I would suggest all guys like to find a partner in that way. I never thought I would find a guy to work with because I was always solo and doing always doing my own thing. But until I met Jim, I was like, well, he likes this music as well. Let's try out. And uh, it worked. So now we've been doing this for, for over 10 years. So um, I would really suggest working together. It's just more fun. We were looking at our channels and we saw the same kind of like plugins on almost every track. And we thought like, hey, why are all these, these plugins we always need like to, to make it sound good? So why not make a plugin that kind of combines all these favorite plugins of ours? And that uh, became the Focus One plugin. Uh, so it's, uh, that's, that's, that's kind of the story about Focus One. And it's nice, like you make it once and we tweaked it and we tweaked it, like I think for one and a half year. And now I see like uh, Sebastian and Grosso, Axwell, Alesso, Hardwell all using it. So that's really nice to see. It's just a really quick, a uh, way to make your sound stand out also, and also just compress it like we have a, there's a compression on it there's a kind of like a nice distortion that it did, do, doesn't sound like a real distortion in a way that is really crunchy but it's just um, slamming out the sound a little bit more there's a nice uh, widen feature uh, but you don't lose the mono um, there's a tremolo just because we use it a lot <laughs> that's kind of like the last feature on the on the on the fader of the focus one plugin so it's kind of like all in one. You put it on a vocal, for instance, it works really well. We use a lot of like um, uh, harmonizers and we use a lot of like vocoders. So on these sounds, it works really well. It really cranks it up and makes it sound super professional. Uh, also on uh, synths, not so much on drums, mostly on synths and vocals we used, uh, we used a lot, yeah. We always go back to mono uh, on, our, on our mixing table. So uh, yeah, that also took a long time to really make the perfect balance because you need also, of course, it changes stuff, but you, you need to keep the mono signal because sometimes when you play like a big show, like Sensation, we played it once and you, you think like the whole big venues, they have all like stereo signals, but sometimes the bigger the venue, the more mono they go because they have speakers coming from everywhere. So the mono is still super important. Uh, Logic Pro. We actually started with, uh, I started with uh, Fruity Loops. But on school, we, they said like, oh, you need to work with uh, Logic Pro or Pro Tools for their recording. So just uh, make sure you do that. And we decided like, well, we're on school now, so why don't we get busy with this program? And, and we're actually, we're still very happy with it because I think Logic Pro is a great um, DAW for recording vocals and getting that beats and it all sounds solid. I think uh, the groove is coming back a little bit more. Like always, we always have some groove in our, in our music, even with the harder EDM stuff. There's always like a snare drum or like uh, some toms going on, but uh, the groove is definitely coming back more and more. Uh, maybe even we go a little bit slower, but you don't feel it's gonna be slow. So we went from 128 to 126, but we add more drums, so it doesn't feel slow at all, it, but it's just 
like uh, enhances the group. I think we have just so many good, great vocalists like uh, coming up. We have we, we had great sessions during COVID with uh, different singer songwriters, so we have really good songs coming up. And uh, we always try now with great radio songs that we also make a club edit from it. It's never the same sound over and over, so don't expect us to do one sound now for the for next year. We will do like different sound because in our set we always feel like hey we need different tastes and we always want to it should be all sick individuals so you, i don't want to play too much of different records with other djs it's nice for sometimes to try it out but if i feel like hey this taste we're missing in our, in our set we're gonna make a record like that to all the producers out there finish your tracks and uh don't don't uh, play your song and and say like well it's not finished yet and 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 this need to change and this need to change just be confident your song is done it's your song is actually never done so just decide that this song is done get it out there and uh, move on to the next one because that's where you make these steps and get better so as soon as you start finishing your song then you 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 are focusing on the details of the track as well you're also listening to your own song as you're listening to, like if someone else is listening to your song, so that's just the way to go. I would also suggest like um, buy a microphone and start recording some of your own stuff. That's what we did in the beginning as well and still do. You learn a lot from that and a lot of times it comes from recording your own stuff. So uh, I would always suggest put some effort, buy a mic and uh, record your neighbor. <laughs> Thank you for being there and uh, hopefully we can meet you again. Like we, we chat a lot like through Discord or through uh, Instagram and uh, we interact a little bit and we did a lot of reels on Instagram. So we got a lot of reaction for, uh, from that. But now back on tour, man, finally we can party again. So uh, I can't wait.